Um, thank you for voting for this in the community poll. I hope I have the screen big enough here for y'all. Uh, let me know in the comment section if everything's good, sound, uh, the way he looks, the way you can hear his, his volume and stuff like that. And uh, let's get started, guys. MMOs were regarded as the godfathers of games. They were the peak of what developers could accomplish. Even though, looking back, that's a fairly subjective thing to say. Everyone knew MMOs had the power to create cult following. But also, everyone knew making MMOs was hard. On average, an MMO has to spend at least six years that in still the game before right there, it can get anywhere near being good. But that didn't stop companies from jumping onto the bandwagon anyway. And soon we could see dozens of new MMOs, all releasing in 2008. All being called the WoW Killers. Spoiler alert, none of them did that. And unfortunately, we can feel the ripple effects even now. It got to a point where every time a new MMO is announced, we all think the same thing. Oh. <laughs> anyway, when you're working on an MMO, you have to respect three pillars. Gameplay is king, social interactions matter, and the world setting is important. When Riot announced their MMO, it became clear that two of the pillars are being respected, and the third one is already done. When it comes to the gameplay, it is currently in the hands of Sorry, I can probably hear people outside playing music this weekend, yeah. Times, and someone who got a reputation for hating boomkins and loving mages. When it comes to the social interactions, it is a dance between the developers and the players. A dev can guide players towards social interactions. Or they can annihilate them. And after that, the players usually find their own fun inside the MMO. From that point on, the devs should do everything in their power to support the players having fun in their own way. And finally, when it comes to the world of an MMO, in Riot's case, it's done. And it's been finished for there quite a few is. years now. In fact, the world of Riot's MMO is in such a good state, they already have he the, made games, the zones, the cultures, and the races. And to a lesser degree, every zone already has its own storyline. Now, of course, unless you follow the lore of League of Legends, you wouldn't know about this. And that's why I decided to make this video. I want to show you all the zones we are going to see in the MMO and what sort okay. of quests we are going to do there. I... So, for the purpose of this video, I will assume okay, okay. you have no idea what League of Legends is about. Perfect. You have no idea what the universe is about, but you like MMOs, your hairline is receding, and you have a crippling fear of Nintendo 64 controllers. So my hairline is intact. I might add, <laughs> why do you think I'm wearing hats? But now, without further ado, let's have a look at all the zones in Riot's MMO. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. This is Rune oh, of the world sorry, of League of sorry. Legends. Right now, you don't know how much time I spent on this map. Ten main regions, but these ten regions don't cover all the land. I don't know if I can watch all this without acting really and stupid. And the lore already revealed that there is gonna be another the Shadow continent Isles. further to the east. That definitely sounds like a future expansion to me. In fact, it would be foolish to release all of these. I was wondering why y'all want me to like react to this and just watch this, but dude, y'all don't. I want to pause it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A lot of people already know and love these regions. The hype behind these expansions would be big. With that said, I know a lot of you would like to play as Shremans or Ionians, and oh! you may be cursing me for suggesting that these would be expansions, but. The lore can justify giving you these nations as playable races without having their regions. I'll show you how Riot can <laughs> It's the coffee them. too, I'm like... First, let's talk about the regions Riot's MMO has to start with. The Northern Continent. <laughs> this entire continent is called Valoran. Oh, Valoran. Not Valorant. Valoran. I'm and sweating. where the absolute core of this world is. The two main regions here are Demacia and Noxus. They are the okay, two okay. big rivals equivalent to the Horde and the Alliance. While I would like to say that Demacia is your classic normie human region, it's not really true. Runeterra doesn't really have a normal place. There is something <laughs> Guys, in every like... region. And I'm Demacia like... Dude, has like... racism. Okay, maybe not racism hey, because Demacia doesn't mind Yordles or Minotaurs. But they really hate mages. That's because in the past, their rivals almost annihilated half of the world using magic. Correct. And so, Demacia was built inside a magic-absorbing forest. Therefore, the trees. Demacia is a really cool place where you can hide from magic. When it comes to the visuals of the zone, you can see a lot of lush fields. It is surrounded by mountains. <laughs> the iconic 
part of the mass are the buildings. Out. They are made of petricite, which is a combination of stone and the magic absorbing wood. Trees, which is where Rise was at. Magic absorbing this is actually his great. cinematic right All here. The buildings have a marble like appearance. And yes, given what material they are using, all the buildings in the Masia also absorb magic. So should a mage visit this region, let's just say it's gonna be a painful experience. On top of this, let's not forget that the Masians can weaponize Petricite. They can turn it into Petricite steel, which gives you your classic anti-magic weapons, and you can sculpt Petricite constructs which wake up after absorbing magic. Come Simply said, on. these guys just really don't like magic. magic at all. The irony is, they've been absorbing it for years now. And this is where the story would kick in. You see, the Masians are so afraid of magic, they founded the Mage Seeker Order. This is an order of people who hunt mages, they throw them in the prison, and they torture them until their body gives up on magic. So yes, being a mage is a crime in the Masia. The thing is, people but they're still using get naturally magic. born with magical abilities. You can't stop it from happening. So not only are there mages hiding in the royal court, right now there is a mage civil war happening in the Masia where mages and people who don't hate mages rise up to fight for moral rights oh so shit some quests in this zone this yes. is the core story Ooh. mages trying to overthrow racist leadership following old laws so the main enemy npcs might be mages and witches but i know what you're thinking now and don't worry there will be plenty of boars to kill here too or at least there are loads of wolves here as well as stags and we can't forget the iconic Demacian raptors. But further to the south, we might find some crag beasts, this is tiny one elephants, and area. Yes, of course, in the Argent Mountains, there are also dragons. Loads and loads of dragons. But that's about it for Demacia. Fun fact the capital city of Demacia is called the Great City of Demacia. <laughs> there was not the so first hilarious. one to come up with this. But thankfully, the other regions are a bit more creative with their names. So now, let's ten out of ten. the Normie region, and let's have a look at the badass region, Noxus. If you're planning on playing a warrior with oversized weapons and overcompensating lush hair... I have... This is I can't talk, okay. You. This place actually has a long and badass history, but we really don't have the time to explain it now. So just I've read a little bit of it. It was built by the most badass warrior in the history of Runeterra. The, the great... This motherfucker literally died on a mountain of corpses. And after he died, he was too angry to stay dead, so he just became the god of the underworld. When this okay, guy no, lived, he built the Immortal Bastion, which is to this day the largest structure on the entirety of Runeterra. And currently, he is banished underneath the Immortal Bastion, but only a few people know about it. So, you know, that's a future raid boss. Anyway, the Immortal Bastion is the capital city of the Noxian Empire, with Noxus being one of the most brutal nations in Runeterra. That's it is uh, the girl! Because the nation is surrounded by rocky earth. It is hard to grow plants here. So Noxians are forced into conquering surrounding land for resources to survive. That's why when you go to the map, you can notice that the Noxian territory is all over the place. It's because these are all the places Noxus has already conquered. Although, mm. when I say it like that, you may imagine Noxus brutally raiding everything. But that's not true. They like to absorb the surrounding nations into their empire. After all, it's just more human resources. Most of the time, they only remove the royalty and they let the leaderless people join their empire. And that's Dumb. because Noxus values strength above all. I've read this. Mm -hmm. tend to not be good fighters. This is what you can see in the after victory cinematic. They kill the king because he Excuse was me. weak and let everyone else join them. Fun fact, conquering nations is so iconic for Noxus, they have their own saying. Kill them until they are family. <laughs> when it comes to the quests in Noxus, it is most likely going to be helping the Empire expand its territory. Although, this region has its own unique enemy too. Inside the Immortal Bastion, there is a cult known as the Black Rose. This cult is connected to the darkest of magics. Yo! So Black Rose, you're a sub, bro. I That's where that comes from? Okay. Dude, y'all are... Okay, alright. Be ready to all fight right. Hemomancers, witches... Demons, 
and the Grey Legion. I'm sorry I keep pausing it too. Please don't hate me for it. Like... Magic to fight for the Empire again. And when it comes to collecting 10 bear asses, here we have the native Drakehounds and Basilisks. Now, while Noxus and Demacia are the main rivals here, both of them are also constantly repelling raids from the north. So mm -hmm. now, I like let's this have area. a look at the Freljord. Freljord. Just like pretty much Freljord. any region on Runeterra, Freljord has a long history. But for the purpose of this video, so just know that the maddening old gods known as the Watchers of the Void, who want to devour the entire reality only because it keeps waking them up, once tried to breach into reality here. They almost succeeded because they tricked the Ice Witch Lysandra into helping them. Fortunately, she realized how wrong she was, and she managed to freeze half of the kingdom with the Watchers still beneath them. So these days, the Ice Witch is the only person holding back the end of reality by keeping the Watchers frozen. So at some point in the future, you bet one of these woken up frozen Watchers is gonna be a raid boss. Now, when it comes to the NPCs, this is where things get diverse. First of all, remember that the Freljord is brutally cruel. Everything is frozen, and survival is everything. So the first enemy here would be the wildlife. From Rhymefangs to Yenis to Druvasks to Elnex to Mammoths to the worst of them all, Poros. Next, we are going to fight the Freljordians <laughs> sure themselves. Job, I don't know what those there things are. are three main tribes here. <clears throat> The Avarosans, who are quite peaceful, the Wintersclaw, who are quite brutal, and the Frostguard, Lysandra's followers who hold back the Watchers. And let me tell you, these guys have some badass armor. Among the notable tribes, there are also the Ursine, which are shamans who worship the Volibear, the yes. primal god of the mm -hmm. wild who slowly turns his worshippers into twisted animalistic monstrosities. Speaking of which, yes, there are also the primal gods of Freljord. Right. And finally, we need to talk about the Iceborne. He's going when fast. I want to comment so much, but I don't want to keep pausing. The ice around them. This special ice is called the true ice. And it is so dangerous, you literally die if you touch it. However, the Watchers also tainted some people, giving them the ability to touch the ice. It is still extremely painful for them to hold a true ice weapon. But at least they can survive it. Who the These people even are thinks known of this shit? The Iceborne. But people were not the <clears> only <throat> things that were tainted. There are also ice trolls, some of whom are also Iceborne. To be honest, right? these guys were made to have their own dungeon. But there are also some animals that were twisted by the Watchers. And Lysandra is even twisting some beings herself to make them serve her. So overall, Freljord is gonna have a lot of cool warriors, shamans, and horror. I have to get this and I have to play so it, and I love the that fucking area anyways. Continent. But this place is actually so big, it can easily make the base world of the game. Especially since there are a bunch of smaller regions in between them. There is Nogmerge, full of witches, Argent Mountains with their dragons, Tokugol with void monsters, Dalamor Plains with him, and so much more. But from here, you can cleverly set up the expansions because of how well everything is interconnected. So now, let's have a look at the continent to the east called... If I was making this game, <laughs> I'd be on his channel like, yeah, yeah, we can, we can, we can do this. <laughs> like, I, if somebody like this, who's this involved, and has this much knowledge of all this stuff, how do you not involve them in the creative process? This is, this is... Sorry to, to sidetrack, but this is my same thoughts on if anybody's familiar with Maximilian. He's a huge. He's the biggest FGC uh, YouTuber. He talks about fighting games. He knows so much about fighting games. And it's like, when are they going to incorporate him into making the shit? And just, you know, they're just... These these type of guys, like, they're, they're one of one. They're one of one, man. Uh, let's go. Sorry. Ionia. Ionia has a very close connection to Noxus. You can only guess why. It's because Noxians once tried to conquer it all during an event simply called the Invasion of Ionia. This was a horrible war full of using children as soldiers because Noxians thought Ionians wouldn't fight back against children. That's and chemical that's... weapons. Lots and lots of chemical weapons. Speaking of which, remember Singed from Arcane? He's, from He's the guy who chemically devastated Ionia. 
Eventually, Noxus failed, but they kept their small controlled territories. So he's so a the piece first of quest shit. Here could be simply boarding a ship, sailing over, and exploring the place for the Noxian Empire. Now, when it comes to Ionia itself, the place gets mystical. Everything here is alive and connected to the spirit of nature. And I mean everything, from the animals to Look the people art. to the buildings. Everything is alive. So if you anger Mother Nature, your house can twist and strangle you in your sleep. So you can only imagine how Mother Nature fought against Noxians. Good. Usually a river came alive to drown them. That's why all the buildings here look like they were woven from wood. It's because they were. With nature magic, people let nature build their houses. It also means that sometimes your house can just walk away. When it comes to the NPCs here, obviously there is gonna be a lot of nature spirits. And a lot more of simply mystical animals. This is where she is from. Giant flying Holy tigers smacks. The never ending story. But be ready to also face local Ionians, blade masters, shadow cultists, murderers, and ninjas. There he is. Good, bad, and the in between. But finally, there is also one, one more enemy that you need to face the furries. That's right, this race is known as the Vastaya. They are half humans and half magical animals. And yes, canonically, the species was born in Before. exactly the way you are thinking. Oh, but to be on, fair, bro. the Vastaya are quite cool and they are definitely gonna be a playable race. Just like Yordles, who also like Ionia a lot. Lastly, after Noxians ravaged Mother Nature, demons started occupying all the places filled with misery and doubt. So that's gonna be a nice bonus enemy. So yes, the exploration of Ionia and the what raid of Shadow Order that? could be a really cool first expansion. But it's definitely not Riot's only option because we can also go south to Piltover and Zorn. These are the ones people will know about simply because this is where Arcane. To now play. I just feel like such a little fucking boot. Boots a military term for a scrub. Green behind the ears type shit like. This is why, I mean, yes, it's great, and we've been freaking out about it, and it's got me crying in videos and shit like that, but look at how small, <laughs> look at how much space that takes up on this entire thing. It's a, it's a, Field you know? zone are two massive cities <clears throat> located one above the other, and they are so massive they could easily be turned into their own playable zones. They are both focusing on futuristic technology, technology powered up by magic of the Hextech gemstones. Using this magic, they can power up anything from guns to augmented limbs to vehicles. Visually, it is simply futuristic Victorian era. And unfortunately, there wouldn't be much of enemy variety. We would likely fight the rich houses of Piltover and their deadly assassins, with the occasional thief on the streets, corrupt wardens, and the occasional rogue steam golem. But things get a bit more interesting in the undercity known as Zone. Zone is the dirty underbelly covered in thick toxic smoke. Because the majority of people are poor here, they developed a cheaper alternative to Hextech called Chemtech. This artificial green stuff can power up cheaper limb replacements, as well as highly unstable weaponry. Zon is also controlled <coughs> by the Cam Barons, which are obviously gonna be the main enemy here. Damn! Side, like a, also a Mortal Kombat character. Engines, unstable constructs, as well as some mass murderers and people who hunt down mass murderers. He was in the and funnily well. enough, at the very very bottom of Zon itself, there are the hidden ruins of an ancient city full of traps. That is obviously gonna be a cool dungeon. So yes, there is not much more that I can add here, built over and zone were simply explored in Arcane. So if you like the series, you are gonna like this place. It's crazy here, that we can travel there's... further south to Shurima. Shurima used to be a massive empire that ruled the world. Was it Asuka or something like that, right? After the by his best friend, the entire empire collapsed. Mm -hmm. This region is a massive desert with the occasional city near a river. In the center of the region, there is the Sun Disk, a colossal piece of star metal that has the power to reflect celestial magic. The Shurimans use this celestial magic to turn their best soldiers into the Ascended, also known know as the Golden God Warriors. The However, these God Warriors wouldn't make a great enemy here. 
That's because after the emperor had died, the ascended started fighting for leadership. And slowly, after learning how to use blood magic to gain the edge, they morphed their own bodies and became the Darkin. Twisted, blood frenzied monsters that would certainly make really cool raid bosses. I didn't know. Besides that this ancient the... evil, Shurima is also full of its own animals raiders, dune scavengers, it looks so beautiful. and on top of all of that, void creatures. Yeah! That's because to the <laughs> south, there used to be a kingdom known as Ikathia that wanted to destroy the Shuriman Empire. So, they asked the Watchers for help. You can imagine how that went. God, the Watchers dude. sent through some void beasts that consumed Ikathia and polluted Shurima to this day. To fight back the void, Shurima <coughs> does have a lot of hidden tombs around with hidden god warrior weapons. Not to mention that Shurima also has a circle of time mages who are trying to freeze the void in time. Now, as I mentioned near the beginning of the video, even if Shurima becomes an expansion, they can still easily make Shurimans a playable race because they Please. are already connected to Noxus. As you can see, of course, Noxians already conquered part of Shurima. So some Shurimans are fighting for Noxus. Also, as a cool fact for those of you who liked Arcane, Hex Crystals are harvested in Shurima. That's why a Shuriman expansion would be a great follow-up to Piltover and Zorn. And again, that's why Riot can easily turn only the northern continent into the base world. Anyway, going west from Shurima, we arrive at Mount Targon. This place is incredibly unique. First of all, this mountain is not natural. It was literally pulled up from the ground by celestial gods. It was in a cinematic that I watched that I haven't finished yet, I think. Like a baby realm, also goat known as or some shit. Prime. Now, because this mountain was pulled up, it also has some unique features. For example, you may find frozen lakes frozen horizontally on the mountain. And the very peak of the mountain is special too. Should a mortal reach the peak despite the brutal okay. climate and the deadly wildlife, either they die from exhaustion or, they get a... or the celestial gods deem them worthy and they become an ascended aspect. There is aspect of war, aspect of the sun, aspect of the moon, aspect of the twilight, aspect of the guardian, and so on. I know all that. Simply said, after people reach the peak, they become some of the strongest beings on the entire planet. So, of course, the mountain is full of people who worship the celestial demigods. And I speculate this is where we could get a lot of cool armor sets. There are the Solari, who are devoted to the aspect of the sun. Then there are the rivals, the Lunari, who are devoted to the aspect of the moon. Y'all tell me a little bit about the lore between the two. The tribe, will become a playable class, the warriors of Rakor. Of course, besides just humans, Targon also has all sorts of furry Vasaya. Near the bottom of the mountain, you may notice that the mountain is alive. But also there are stellar corns, a variety that of mind-bending creatures, and loads and loads of dragons. Speaking of which, remember that this place is linked to the Celestial Realm. So this is where we may also meet the star-forging Celestial Dragon Aurelian Soul. I've read well about you. all sorts of other Celestial Beings. A lot of these would make for interesting bosses. In fact, the ascension of Mount Targon would be a really cool raid. Next, on the other side of Shurima, there is Ishtal. This is a special place where people are mastering the elemental magic. They are using it for everything. Fishing, smithing, walking... And this place I'm, is I don't definitely going to be place. for an expansion. Basically, remember when Ikathian asked the Watchers for help? And then that happened? Ishtal was their neighbor, and after they saw the Void devour an entire kingdom, they believed the Void would soon devour the entire world. So, using yes, the elemental magic, too, right? Ishtal built massive walls of plants around their entire region, isolating themselves from the rest of the world. For three and a half thousand years, Ishtal stayed isolated, believing that the world outside of their walls was devoured by the Void. But now, very recently, some mages found out that the world outside is completely fine. So now, the Ishtali mages are slowly revealing this. Expansion, for to sure honest, expansion. Ishtal is the most He's underdeveloped right. region in Runeterra. We know the region has a lot of hunting Vastaya, deadly plants and some elemental dragons. But most of the region is still a mystery to us. 
So at least here, Riot will have the freedom to, to create whatever they want to create. But now, we leave the main continent to visit the last two regions. First of all, there is Bilgewater. If you like pirate adventures, this is gonna be your place. This is where we are going to explore inns and gambling dens, <laughs> even some local temples worshipping the god of motion, Nagake Boros. Here we are going to fight pirates, sea monsters, sea witches, sea vastaya, maybe some demons. And possibly we'll side with Sarah Fortune to fight the king of the pirates, Gangplank. But there's a lot more here. Last year, Riot released their RPG, which was set in Buildwater. So not only can we already explore this place in detail, but it even has a monster journal. And at a quick glance, you can already see some really cool bosses too. However, this place is also linked to the last place I want to show you today. The Shadow Isles. <laughs> see, every year the horrors of the Shadow Isles lurk out. And Bilgewater just happens to be the closest place. So every year, Bilgewater <coughs> is fighting the undead. Once upon a time, the Shadow Isles used to be the Blessed Isles, a rich place full of advanced magic. Long story short, there was a young asshole king who wanted to revive his dead queen. And in the process, he accidentally released Dark Necromancer. Vago! He's Vago! Destroyed or Vago! And made it home for undead. Right? In lore, this event is called the Ruination. And because the RPG is called The Ruined King, it may not be a surprise to you that you also get to explore the Shadow Isles there. And there they have anything you can imagine. That's him. Undead I know that's him. horrors creeping everywhere. And should we ever venture into these islands? Thresh. I have no idea whom we're going to fight. The ruined king who caused all of this is banished Fire. elsewhere. Fire. Thresh, who siphoned his magic after oh, he was banished, banished also left the isles. Oh, they're not even there? Him, the most brutal soldier of them all is currently around Demacia. So the Shadow Isles don't currently have a main baddie. So this is where no. Riot will push oh. forward some of the side characters. Now, Velvet? even though these have all been the regions the that are currently area. set up on Runeterra, Riot has already confirmed that there is a new continent further to the east. Currently, it is planned to be revealed in the upcoming Ruination novel. And so far, we know that this new continent is where the ruined King Viego is from. And this is also where he was banished at the end of his story. All we know about that place is I haven't seen that cinematic yet. I need to know there what that what, more what dragons that's, here. Uh, and in fact, Kamavor, which looks is so the badass. nation, has a lot of draconic armor. So should Riot run out of places to explore, don't worry, they can always make up more. But that's all I wanted to show you today. As someone who's been following the lore of League of Legends from the very beginning, I can tell you, I'm very confident the setting of Riot's MMO is gonna be great. Their incredible yeah, writers have been preparing the world for years now. And now, it's time to harvest the fruit. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below. Yeah, I like because this right video. Now, I still have three more topics that I could talk about in regards to the MMO. Oh, we're not done. All I right, especially chill, chill. wanna talk about the potential raid bosses we can face and the potential classes we could play. And as someone who has collected an unholy amount of transmog, I would love to show you all the cool armor sets this universe has. But that's it for this video. See you in six to eight years when the MMO gets released. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> I like how he brought it all the way back to the initial state uh, point he made. Okay, guys. Um, I see why everyone wanted me to watch that. And instead of me um, giving a whole... Oh, he's almost at... I'm not even subbed. He's almost at... What am I doing? <clears throat> so instead of me going and... You know, trying to ramble on about my thoughts and different things like that. Like y'all know, man, I'm new to this. I'm a rookie to this. I just want to know information, but I want y'all, if you watch the video, hop in the conversation and let me know what you're most excited about, what you're looking forward to, things that you want to see and expand on because it's it feels <clears throat> it feels wrong of me to be like, I want to see, like, motherfucker. Ain't nobody worried about that. I want to know what the fuck y'all looking forward to and tell me what I should be checking out. What else I should know. Um, yeah, I see why y'all was trying to tell me like, yo, Taco, get on this. That was legit. <laughs>
Um, thank you if you watched the video, man. I love you guys. Everybody take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I'll see y'all soon with some more content.